guys, here we are on the hill. We're gonna go up the top here, and I'm actually, my strategy is use the blade like I was yesterday and kind of shave this slope down. So that is what we're doing. I had to uh, grab a couple branches off of that tree so I could get in here. They were dead. Don't worry, all you tree huggers. I'm just kidding. No one that watches my channel is a tree hugger. That would be torture. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is kinda kinda hold this, kinda kinda. Uh, I'm gonna try to hold this slope, so I'm gonna go at it this way with my blade first, um, and kinda shave some of this down a little bit, and see if we can't blend it into the corner of the house here. And naturally that material is gonna fall off the downhill side of my blade here, is the idea. We'll see how well it works. Trying to keep my, my boom down a little bit. So they do have a gutter down spout there I need to pay attention to. Thanks for reminding me, guys. Um, and so a quick tip, when you're grading with the blade of a mini, you can see that's like a hard angle transitioning from the yard to my new slope I just cut in. What we can do is we can straddle that with our tracks, take our blade down, and we can actually kind of round that off a little bit. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna come all the way back here, though, because I kinda wanna round this whole slope I've made a little bit. So we're gonna come way back here and set our blade, and I'm basically straddling my new slope I've cut in and the existing slope, and we're gonna take the ridge out of the middle. We're not going to be super aggressive. But it's going to it's going to kind of round off the top of this ridge we've made. And then obviously the key here as we approach the house is don't get so caught up looking down here that you aren't paying attention to your boom and that way you don't run into the house and cause damage and upset people, you know, because that's generally a best practice. And so you can see we've softened, let me turn where you can, you can see we've kind of softened that, that hard edge there. So we'll do one more and we're gonna straddle the new line we just made. Again, being super, super light here, the goal is not to uh, not to take a ton of material. All we're trying to do is just soften this edge we're making here. Dang tree. It sure is wanting to hook a hose. And I know someone's going to ask. That beeping is me switching over from rabbit to turtle mode. So uh, turtle mode, it gives you one beep. Rabbit mode, it gives you two beeps. And now we're just going to try to blend this it a little. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, unless he brings a bunch of material in here, this is just going to be steep. There's not really a good way to make this uh, super usable with what we've got to work with. So now I'm going to go down and actually start shaping this with my bucket. And with my blade downhill, that was strategic, now I can push my blade down, level myself out a little better, and uh, I'm a little more stable. So one of the weird things about this bobcat that I just, and you know, like, like I keep saying, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing it now, but the, one of the things that's irritating to me about it and that I don't like is, you know, like a mini excavator, this thing is really jerky, really, you know, it bounces you around. But at the same time, it's like the jerkiness is in how responsive it is, but it doesn't translate to real speed of the hydraulics. So like, you know, sticking and booming all the way out. Look at how long we're having to wait. And then booming and sticking in. Like this is me, I've got the stick pulled all the way. The, the jerky, super fast responsiveness doesn't translate to it actually being a fast machine. It's just jerky. And that's one of the things I was telling Rick the other day that yeah, he had had some seat time in this thing a little bit and, and was relating to is it's just, it's just jerky. It's, 
it's not a fun machine to run and it's not like it's at least translating over to more productivity out of the machine it just makes for a rough ride yeah this is not going to be a good slope for mowing unfortunately there just ain't too much you can do with it with what we've got to work with here. Boy, that was a good pass, wasn't it? Good job, Brian. Like I said, I'm tired, guys. Cut me some slack. Ooh, oil sands for life is gonna just chew my ass for grading sideways with that bucket. I can't wait to hear your comments, oil sands for life. So right here is our outlet for that gutter. So I am going to uh, leave that a little exposed. So we'll kind of strategically pull this stuff down and then kind of work around that gutter outlet. Something like that. Ooh, that's the one bad thing about working back here in the trees and all of this wood chipping that we've done or mulching is my allergies have been going nuts. It ain't the prettiest. But it'll get the job done. I do wish I could get up there somehow and compact that a little bit, but there's not really a good way to do that because it's so freaking steep. And we do have, it's hard to see probably on camera, we do have our outlet exposed here. Um, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit so maybe it's a little more obvious to Rick when he gets here. So I'm going to back up on this slope and then I'm going to put my blade down and we're going to go back to kind of scraping all the garbage off of here. Ooh, baby, it's going to take me a little, little effort to stay in my seat. This is where I'm going to put my seat belt on, assuming, well, see, this is a great example of, you know, everyone bitches at me because I say you don't have to wear your seat belt all the time. Everyone's like, yeah, you need to wear your seat belt, wear your seat belt. I understand. I understand you need to be safety conscious, but at the same time, half the time the seatbelts don't work in these machines because no one ever uses them. So get off my case, everybody. This is gonna make for a long day right here. I will say one thing this is really effectively demonstrating is when you're new to equipment, um, your tendency is to think that you're gonna tip all the time uh, if you get on the slightest slope. And you can see like we're, like this is not a light slope. This is dang near 45 degrees. And I still, you know, if I really get the arm out there, we're gonna start to tip forward. I mean, we're still not tipping forward. And so for new operators, that is one thing to consider is it is it is unsettling when you start working on slopes the first time, but equipment is made intentionally with a very low center of gravity uh, because it is designed to work on slopes. And, and loaders are a great example of that. A lot of guys, and I was the same way the first time I really started running a loader, you know, the first, the first time you get on a little bit of an angle, you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna tip over. Um, it's actually, you gotta put some effort in to tip some of these machines. Obviously, it depends on the conditions you're working on too, but, but for the most part, these are very, very stable machines. They are made for working on slopes. You're not gonna just tip over the second it gets out of level, so. So just another nugget for, for new operators, it's, it's unsettling, but you're not going to go anywhere. But that being said, like I've talked about on the channel too, uh, know your limits. If you're not comfortable working on a slope and you think you might have an issue, uh, it, is, it is okay to, to ask questions and ask a seasoned operator to show you how it's done and there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing to be embarrassed at. 
you know, accidents happen when you push beyond your abilities. So always operate within your abilities. And then obviously when you are on an extreme slope like that, you know, you want to operate in safe conditions. So you'll notice um, I was intentionally, whether, whether I was blading or not with grading, blading, whether I was grading or not with the blade, uh, when I'm going up an extreme slope like that, I'm always going to position the machine to where the blade is behind me. I'm going to put the blade relatively close to the ground. So if the machine does start to tip at all, the blade's going to catch it. Or as you guys saw when I was going up and down, uh, I had my arm out here ready to catch me if I were to tip. You know, if I were operating perpendicular to the slope, I would have had my boom over here, you know, while we tracked up and down the slope like this so that if I was gonna tip forward this way, I can catch myself with the arm. So obviously, part of learning the machines and learning how to become a better operator and get into more extreme conditions, you do have to push yourself and you do have to get yourself into some uncomfortable positions, but at the same time, always make sure that you're doing it in a safe way um, where you've got the machine in a position that if, if something starts to happen, you know, you're not going to roll, you're not going to do anything that's going to cause you harm or cause a ton of machine damage. Um, but that's how you, you generally want to work in more extreme circumstances is you push your boundaries a little bit safely, but make sure you have the position or I'm sorry, make sure you have the machine positioned in an orientation where you're going to be safe and you can catch yourself when something starts to go wrong. So that being said, I'm going to flip the camera off. I think I'm going to go set up a time lapse of me dressing this area up. Uh, yeah, let's go do that. I'm going to go set up a time lapse and uh, I'll catch you guys here a little bit later in the day. We'll talk to you guys in a bit. guys I am coming back up the hill from grabbing some lunch thought I'd give you guys an update uh, as you can see up there ahead of us making a fair amount of progress uh, that attachment Rick Scott is pretty dang sweet curve to it just because it doesn't work like a Harley rake you you basically kind of grub going forward it's almost like a uh, it's almost like a giant asphalt rake in all honesty and so you kind of go forward grubbing all your stuff and then as you back drag it kind of leaves you a really really nice seed base and the cool thing about it is um, it leaves a real seed base you know a Harley rake generally will only scratch down a half inch or so and and it leaves you some fluff material on top, but outside of the fluff, there's really not a good seed base there. Versus this thing, because you've got those tines that are probably, I don't know, probably a solid three to four inches long, you're getting down in there really turning the soil, and then when you back drag, it leaves this really, really, I mean, you guys can see, this is a super nice finish he's leaving with it. So, uh, that attachment, I wanna say he ran, I wanna say he ran in like seven or eight grand which is significantly cheaper than a $12,000 Holly rake. Um, and the versatility, that thing actually has a set of scarifiers on it that you can hydraulically control. There's, that's the only set of hydraulics on it is, is the scarifiers, scarifiers, however you want to pronounce it. You can kind of see them sticking up right in front of the wheel there. 
uh, he can hydraulically drive those down and you can rip and and he was up against a stump earlier uh, and those things I will say this what has impressed me more than anything is that attachment is about three times beefier than I thought it was going to be from all of the online literature so I will do an actual review on that at some point here um, just because every online review I've ever seen really doesn't do this thing justice. It is a beefy, beefy rake. So you can use that to really get in and grub things. You can use those scar fires and really rip if you're doing, you know, uh, millings where you're redoing a driveway with old millings, you know, how they almost turn into asphalt again. Like you can really rip on that thing and it is built to take it. So, um, so anyway, enough with that. We will move on with our day here. So what I am working on, uh, as you can see, we've got this slope pretty well dressed up. I'm working on kind of dressing up in between all these trees. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm gonna tie this all together because if you're not familiar, you can't just fill up a tree trunk. Like we can't go two feet up a, on a tree trunk and, and fill above the dirt level. It will kill the tree. So. You know, you're lucky if you can get away with a foot on some of these larger, more established trees. Um, so I've kind of got some hard, a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a potato chip almost choked me to death just then. And I got allergies going on. It's a good time. Uh, anyway, I've got some hard elevation points I have to hit there, but I'm also trying to slope it to where the guy can mow and there's a bunch of garbage in there. So anyway, we're gonna go over there and we're gonna start playing around. <clears throat> that is the plan. Which, by the way, just a quick thing, you know, one of the things that is super enjoyable about the excavating industry is being outside and the cool things you see. Uh, I was up on this hill shaping the slope here, right over here, and like a two day old fawn goes shooting out of the grass right here, like not even 10 feet away from me. So that was pretty cool. Super, super little guy. You could tell he was only a couple days old, but that was pretty awesome. So those are the sort of things you don't ever see in an office, which is why most of us in the excavating industry love what we do, is because you get to see cool stuff like that and you aren't stuck in an office all day long. And I'm thinking because of the lack of room to move around, I'm just gonna have to dial this in for the most part with the bucket. So yeah, let me spin so you guys can see that attachment run. It's a pretty slick little attachment. I've been really impressed with it. I was, and I'm gonna be totally honest, I was skeptical when he told me he was buying it. I was going, eh, I don't know. I think that's gonna be kind of a seven, $8,000 experiment that we're gonna ultimately end up getting a Harley rake. And, um, but he brought it out this morning and we legit took it up against a couple stumps that were still in the ground and it did a fantastic job. He was really yanking on it. And like I said, those scare fires held together with no problem. Um, even the tines on the front, the tines on the front, even the company that makes it, in my opinion, uh, didn't really do those tines justice in their advertisements. Like those suckers are, I don't know, probably three quarters of an inch thick. Because Rick and I, when, when it was on the way, you know, I, I told him my only fear was bending those tines on the front when you're grubbing. And he goes, yeah, I had the same thought. And then when it arrived, he called me and he said, dude, this thing is way heavier duty than they even make it look online. And uh, that was the first thing I noticed this morning when I pulled it off the trailer was it is, it is built stout. It can take some abuse. By the way, it's got a, a middle section in it that you can lock into place. He's got it open right now in the free float position because we have so much trash in this yard. Um, but if you had a lot cleaner material, it's got a middle section that you can lock down and then the whole thing acts like a box blade. You can actually use it to shave down. And Rick said he was using that in his driveway playing around and he said when it's in the locked position uh, you can really like you're pulling a lot of material now the one downside we've been pushing all our garbage over here to kind of fill this area but the downside is now I have to separate the freaking garbage out from the actual dirt it's always fun working on slopes it makes for a very tiring day it's rough on your body because you have to use a lot of your core muscles to support yourself oh 
Uh -oh. So you don't, you know, fall out of the seat. Might as well throw this back on for a minute. Oh. So yeah, working on slopes, whether you're dozing or excavating, is always, it's always a very exhausting day. All right. I think I'm gonna go down to the bottom side of the hill now and start grubbing that area over there. Woo, that's a little soft. Maybe I should pack that down before we really get gung-ho here. I believe that's a good plan. We're gonna pack this down first. And like I was talking about earlier, you can see the slope we're on right now. We're still technically not tipping. I can I can lift all my implements off the off the ground and we are not tipping. We're close, but we're not there yet. So these machines are designed to hit some pretty serious inclines and it is okay. And I'm gonna tip this way. So I'm gonna move my boom over here and that way I can catch myself if we start to go over or anything happens. And I'm going slow more for operator comfort than anything else because I don't wanna bounce all over. Make a couple more back and forth passes here and we should have this pretty well compacted. Actually, now that I've tracked all the way down here, I'm gonna come at it from this angle. I'm sorry guys, I'm, you know, it's post lunch. I'm still, my focus is on digesting right now, okay? I'm not focused on operating right now. And we'll swing on up under the trees here. And I'm, I'm trying to blend this right now because we don't want to reseed this entire chunk of the yard. You know, you, you don't want to uh, do more than what you've bid, but I do need to blend this a little bit. So I'm gonna try to, uh, there's a tree. I'm gonna try to start coming out of it, not grub all of it. All right, guys, I think I've talked you up enough. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna see what else the day has in store, so I'll catch you here in a little bit. You ready for me to load? All right. All right, guys. So I figured I would show you guys our redneck dump trailer situation. So he's got a, he's got a trailer stinger on the skid, and we're dragging around the dump trailer. And all this material's just basically going to the back of the property, so that is, that is how we're moving it. And instead of getting a truck involved, and Rick actually hit a big old pothole right yesterday. Oh. So I, I know you. Let's turn off the uh, Build It podcast real quick. So Rick hit a, a pothole yesterday in his truck and did a couple thousand dollars worth of damage. So that is where his truck is, is getting fixed. So we have our redneck dump truck situation here. Whatever works, baby. And there he goes, off into the blue yonder.
So I'm just gonna kind of pull these piles in, pull everything together. So I'm not having to move around when Rick comes back with the trailer. Can I reach it? Oh yeah, baby. So I will give Bobcat another point. Uh, the reach on this machine is pretty stellar. You know, this thing has surprised me more than once where I thought there's no way I'm gonna reach that and then it does. So that is a positive for the machine. Doesn't make up for all the other stuff, but at least we got something, right? There he is, come on here. Got some stuck now. There it is, all right. So another thing that drives me nuts about this machine is the Bluetooth randomly decides when it's going to play. Like I can shut my, I can, yeah, exactly. So I can turn Spotify totally off on my phone, get all the way out of the app, close it and kill the app. And this thing will still five minutes later randomly decide to start playing. It's like, what the F? I don't, I don't get it. So everybody worried about machine intelligence replacing you. I mean, maybe it's already starting. Maybe the machines are taking over and it is gonna listen to the radio regardless of whether or not the operator wants to listen to the radio. All right, let's go get back in position. Should be able to reach now. Have a goal, yeah. So when you find yourself in a situation where you're loading trucks and you got a little bit of downtime between trucks, um, that's a way to keep yourself busy is doing all of your pile maintenance. Uh, that's what you need to focus on if there's a dead time between trucks. Only, only after you have totally gotten your stockpile prepped can you sit idle. Um, so what I would normally do in a situation like this, um, if I were in a much bigger hoe and this were a production job, is while my trucks are not here, I would be taking everything back here and moving it up here to where I only have to turn 90 degrees because as we've talked about in multiple videos, uh, swing time and extra movements waste time. And so if I can take all of my material and keep it to where I only have to turn 90 degrees and fill a truck or two trucks, depending on how many are in your truck stack, any downtime you get, that's what you need to be doing is using that time to organize and get your material ready so that you can very quickly load those trucks and send them on down the road. Because if those trucks are sitting still, they're not making money. So that's kind of the mentality you wanna be in when you're in a situation like this. Obviously this is not super, you know, a big super production job and I'm not worried about cycle times. Um, but on a bigger job with a bigger hoe, that's kind of the way you wanna think about your pile and setting everything up.
Okay guys, I'm gonna stick at it and we'll catch you guys here in a little bit. All right guys, it's the end of the day and it's time to be totally real and honest. I'm exhausted, like no joke. We have been uh, doing straw, fertilizer, seed for the last like hour and a half. It's close to 90 degrees. It's like a thousand percent humidity because it's getting ready to rain later. Uh, while you can see the trees up above us, you know, blowing in the wind, there is a breeze up there. Unfortunately, we're in the woods enough wing and shit for breeze. So it is miserably hot. It's hard to breathe. You guys are familiar. You're in the, you're in the industry. You know what it's like. These are the days when it's hard, guys. Everybody, even the seasoned guys who have been in this industry, these are hard days. But you know what? This is what we take pride in, right? This is not an office job. It's hard work. It wears you out. You know, your body's tired. You're like, you're to your core, you're exhausted. But let's look at what we accomplished today. So uh, just a quick update here. We were using the dump trailer, as you guys saw earlier and carting it around like a giant wheelbarrow behind the skids here. Uh, unfortunately, at the rate we were using the dump trailer, we drained the battery faster than the charger was charging the battery, so it died on us. So that's gonna have to charge uh, overnight so that we can use it tomorrow. Otherwise, we would have finished pulling all the shit out of here, but here's where we left off. So this is, so there's the radius that we dug in uh, on the down and dirty a little while back, which I don't know if I posted that by the time you guys see this or not, but. There's our pretty radius. It's, uh, it needs a little dress up work since we've been doing all our tidy up here. Uh, but this slope has come out. We've got it shaped pretty well. That's the rest of the material there that needs to come out. And then we will use the SR3 to dust that off. Uh, going to the other side here, we just need to load all this shit out, honestly. Um, Rick sort of used the SR3 on this side. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's ready to go. We're gonna. We're gonna do it just a just a tiny bit of tidy up tomorrow, you know, like getting that branch out of there and a couple of little piles of stuff. But mostly, it's just load this stuff out here. And then uh, here's what we've been working on for the last hour and a half, and which which is why all of us are ready to die and ready to go home and exhausted and tired. But we actually have a yard over here, and it turned out pretty dang nice. Um, let me walk down here so you guys can actually see the slope. We were able to scrounge up quite a bit of material from the bottom edge here. I don't know if you guys remember from, from day one, but there was a pretty hard lip down here at the bottom. Rick and I worked together to shave that and push that material up towards the house. So yes, it's still steep, but I mean, you guys can remember the cliff that it was this morning. We were able to soften that up quite a bit. So that is what we've been up to. So unfortunately, like I said, we're in the trees here, so I can't give you guys some sweet drone shots to finish this one out, unfortunately. And I apologize, because I know that's kind of my thing, right? But I do want to show you one quick thing real, real quick. Since Rick is no longer running, we can take a closer look at this SR3. So let's take a gander, shall we? So this is the SR3. Um, so this right here is your scar fires. Uh, as you can see, they're hydraulically driven and they will actually go down and you can adjust the depth uh, at which they bottom out at. Um, you guys remember earlier I was talking, it's got a middle section that works like a box blade. That's this bar right here. It actually has a set of teeth down there. And right now he's got it. So if you come around to the front here, this is the control bar. I'm not gonna lift this sucker because it's pretty heavy and he's got material on it. But um, basically where you set this pin, and there's another one on the other side, which he's missing the pin. I need to let him know that. Um, but anyway, where you set this pin determines how much that can float. So right now it can float all the way up, but you can lock this in the lockdown position and that sucker will stay tight uh, and it will act like a box blade. So this is by ABI Attachments. There's their logo there. Logo there. This is the SR3. And I was telling you about those tines that we were worried about. Uh, I take it back guys, I think that's about an inch thick steel. Those suckers ain't gonna bend. And I know that for a fact because we were pushing some shit around with it today. And uh, if it was gonna bend, it would have bent. Uh, same with the scarifiers. Um, we were yanking on a stump pretty dang hard with those. 
again no bending no breaking no i like it didn't budge so that thing is built like a tank and it does a great job like i said earlier there's a bit of a learning curve to it you know rick is still still kind of dialing in his technique i will say technique is really big with this one so as you guys know that run harley rakes it takes a little bit to get the technique down uh, this is no different the difference on this one though is you can keep cleaning with this rake like you think you're done and then you make one more pass and you scrounge up more stuff and so what ends up happening what we found today is we ended up generating i don't know probably another eight to ten yards worth of material off of this job uh, because he just kept going back and cleaning more and more and more and ultimately what needs to happen is you need to get to a point where you've grubbed it out pretty well you do your one back drag pass and call it good because if you keep going this thing will keep cleaning so you know that's one of those things we're kind of learning honing the technique um, so yeah even for season you know operators you know rick has how many hours in this skid thousands um, anytime you get into a new attachment or anything different you even seasoned operators spend some time learning and there's a there's a bit of time where you're not great you're not a professional you're not an expert at it uh, that's just part of the business guys hone your craft right that's what we say on this channel hone your craft so that is what we have been doing rick has been doing i haven't been running this at all i've been in the mini the whole time um, so so yeah that's kind of the the status update of the day and where we're at and where we're finishing out we are going to come back here tomorrow uh, i think it's going to be about a half day for me anyway um, and because I've got some other stuff I have to do before Minnesota which is Monday oh boy um, but anyway I've got uh, I've got a couple things to do so I'm gonna do a half day here basically what we're gonna focus on is cleaning up all the stuff up the hill here getting it carted to the back and then I will take off while these guys just basically seed fertilize and straw blanket so so that is the plan so thanks again for following the vlog we'll catch you guys tomorrow to do some more uh do some more crap hauling yeah that's it you guys have a good night we'll see you tomorrow well i take back what i said earlier about us being done and about us having a half day tomorrow so what ended up happening three hours ago is we executively jointly made the decision to go ahead and load out all that stuff tonight uh, and instead of me popping down for a half day tomorrow, uh, we just knocked it out. So <laughs> literally, uh, we carted all of the stuff back there in our makeshift wheelbarrow. And then I carted the hoe back there every time and scraped the trailer clean because that was going to be far faster than waiting for that battery to charge up. So we ended up wrapping up. It is nine o'clock right now. So... And I know I keep saying so. I'm sorry, guys. I'm driving. I'm concentrating on that so I don't die while I make this. But I also wanted to get you guys kind of inform you of what's going on because there's not going to be a day three on this one. And I hate to leave you guys with, like, no footage of the finished product. Um, yeah, that's where we left off. We basically loaded out all of the stuff that I told you we were going to do tomorrow. We had a nice little sunset there for a second, but we just missed it. I turned the camera on just a hair too late. But that is the nice thing about working late. You get to enjoy the nice sunsets. Um, but anyway, we didn't dress anything up tonight. They're going to do that tomorrow, but they don't need me. That's why we decided to load all that out tonight is because we could get it done. And now it's only one operator required. Uh, Rick's going to move all of our equipment back to the boulder wall job because the flower bed we put in needs to be redone. And don't even get me started on that one. So anyway, this is it for this vlog series, guys. Today was kind of a realistic look into what it's like being an operator in this industry. You know, I started the day exhausted, as you guys know. When I ended this at 5 o'clock, or 5.30, whatever time it was, uh, I was exhausted and about to fall down because it was so freaking hot and humid and it had been an exhausting week. And then we ended up staying an additional three hours. So that's part of the business, guys. Um, if you're not in this industry and you're thinking about getting into it, Here's a real peek into what it is being an operator. Sometimes you are out super late when you are super exhausted and it is not fun, but it's all part of the industry. So anyway, thanks for following along. Sorry I couldn't get you guys any finished shots of that job. Um, but yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. And I believe the next one will be in Minnesota. So we'll see you guys in Minnesota. See you guys.